Okay, so I thought we'd do an interesting lesson I've been playing with all week in my other classes. Uh, I had not done it before, and it's very interesting. It's an eye lesson. You game? Yeah. You game for an eye lesson? You've done eye lessons. <clears throat> well, you haven't done this one. This one's really a, really a trip. <laughs> so, um, but it does require sitting in a way that many people do not find comfortable, and I will describe it to you as you're lying there comfortably on your backs. Um, it's sitting with your feet standing, and you'll be resting your forearms on your knees. Okay, can you picture that? And some people can't do that without really rounding their back or hunching or f even falling backwards. I've That's had people... Asian like, style <coughs> like this? Like, kind of like that, but with the feet separated. And, and like you were reading a book. So like you were reading a book with your hands uh, separated. And, and sort of, so you'll be sitting... Uh, let's see if I can attempt to demonstrate like this, like this, right, so, <clears throat> so the, the feet will not become important until kart. later. Driving a go-kart, there you go, there you go. <laughs> so if that becomes tiresome, you might want to place yourself against a wall, because we'll be sitting here for a while, and, um, or a post. what's that? Or a post. Or a post. The post. Or a post, yes, yes, yes. Are we um, gonna, yeah, I'm headed for the wall. You're headed for the wall. And if you can't sit like like with your, your feet on the floor, um, a bolster or a bunch of blankets will work just fine to hold your book. <clears throat> but we're not holding a book, but uh, we're holding threads in our thumb and forefingers. Oh, this is a pearls and threads one? What? What? You know this? You heard? I was in a class in, in Building 50 where it's very challenging. <laughs> oh. When was that? A year or so ago. Really? Yeah. Oh, that one. I, you know, I didn't teach the full lesson. I taught a piece of it, and then I went off on a tangent. Um, on it, on put, you know, it was, did a hybrid lesson. But yeah, it is, it is very challenging, but it's pretty amazing effect it will have. So, okay, lie on your backs. We've all determined how we're going to sit, lie, <coughs> and accommodate the cats. So, take a... Uh, yeah, I tried that. Doesn't, doesn't really work. Yeah. Doesn't really work. So, <coughs> yeah, we meet our eyes. Uh, the human nervous system is so wired that we want to have our eyes at the horizon, hence uprightness. So when a baby lifts its head, <clears throat> its, it's I think, impulse or wiring is to get it up so, so you can see the horizon. Okay, so just take a few moments to notice how your legs fit on the floor. And your pelvis. And how much of your back touches the floor. And where you rest on your noggin. And roll your, your noggin, your head side to side a little bit, right and left. Check in with the neck. And then just, just rest and sense your face. Sense the right side of your face and the left side. And what do, what do you sense about your right eye and your left eye? Can you sense their weight? Can you sense their presence in, 
in the skull and the orbital bones there. And then keeping your eyes closed, <clears throat> can you, we'll just, war this is the warm up, can you bring your eyes as though to see forward, but keep them closed. Bring your eyes as though to look straight forward. And then let them relax. Let them relax. And where do they go when they let go, if you were sleeping? And bring the eyes again to look forward. What does that do to you to bring the eyes to focus forwards and then let them drift where they would drift if you were asleep? Which is up and a bit to the right and the left where you might have horns coming out of your head. And then can you look forward again and out of your right eye have a beam of light traveling out of the eye all the way to the ceiling, straight up to the ceiling. And can you turn that ray of light into a black string? And on that string, can you place a white ping pong ball? Thread it on the black string. And send the ball along the string straight up all the way to the ceiling. So you're looking out of your right eye. And when this ping pong ball reaches the ceiling, begin moving it along the thread down until it touches your right. I. And when it lands there on the lid of your <clears throat> of your right eye, go ahead and send it back up to the ceiling. Watch it. And <clears throat> excuse me, bring it back down. And then leave that. You can have that fade away. And out of your, and, and then take a moment to just sense your face and your right eye and your left eye. And then have a beam of light shooting out of your left eye all the way up to the ceiling. When you can see that clearly, then turn it into a black string or a wire and place a white ping pong ball on it and slide the ping pong ball all the way up to the ceiling and then down all the way to touch your left eye. And do you lose it? Does it disappear and reappear? Does it disappear and reappear somewhere else? You can training the eyes to look in a distance. The eyes are learning to look in the distance and to adapt to an object coming closer. which is what our eyes are designed to do. And when you've done that a couple of times, when you've had a couple of runs along this, the string, <clears throat> bend up your knees, stand your feet. Then I know you're, you're done with the movement. And go ahead and tilt your knees slowly to the right and to the left just to bring your spines online and check in with your the rest of you and what do you look at 
Where do your eyes go as you tilt the knees right and left? If you think of your left little toe, do your eyes go down there? Okay. <clears throat> Let's come to standing. Uh, no, uh, sitting with the feet standing. Come to sitting with the feet standing. And hang your forearms on your knees. Stand your feet and hang your forearms on your knees and have your elbows hanging and let your, your hands kind of flop so the palms would be more or less facing the ceiling so turn to rotate the forearm, yeah. And then this is what you're going to hold some imaginary threads with. So you got the position, get comfortable and <laughs> she moved toward the wall and moved towards the pillar. <clears throat> There's lots of, yeah, or the mirror. You can use the mirror. And close your eyes and imagine that you are holding a black, a black thread in, the, in between your right thumb and forefinger. And you can, and that thread runs from your right thumb and forefinger to your right eye, to the center of your right eye. And on that string, without opening your eyes, on that string, can you place an imaginary white pearl? A beautiful, shiny, lustrous pearl. And begin to slide the pearl along the thread so that it goes the length to touch your thumb and forefinger. and then all the way to touch the eye. So it's delicate. And sense what you're doing with your right eye. And both eyes are working, but we're focusing. We're focused on the right side. And keep having, keep threading the pearl along the string. Notice where you lose it. And now wherever the pearl is, can you move it so that it's a quarter of the way close to you, so in between the midpoint and you. And then slide it so that it's three quarters of the way away from you. Eyes are closed. And then bring it to the midpoint, exactly to the midpoint. And without opening your eyes, Take your left thumb and forefinger and take hold of the pearl. And then you can open your eyes and see, oh, were you in the middle? Or were you at three quarters? Where did you, were you way off? Offline. No, offline, yeah, I was too, I was too. Okay, and rest on your backs. sense if there's anything different about you on the right. And now send that string, that black string from your right eye, <coughs> excuse me, again up to the ceiling. And that right 
that black string up to the ceiling again, and then thread the ping pong ball on it and have it go up and down. Is it easier to see now? Is it easier to watch? And can you do it quickly? Zip it up and zip it down. Do it quickly a couple of times. A falling object and something flying away from you. And then slow it down. And what did that do? And come to sit again. Come to sit again and take hold of a thread in between your left thumb and forefinger, feet standing, forearms hanging on your knees somehow. And with your eyes closed, connect a lot that line, that black thread from your left forefinger and thumb to your left eye center of your left eye and place the pearl on it and slide the pearl. And then stop the pearl so that it's three quarters of the way away from you. And then move it closer so that it's just a quarter of the way away from you. And then move it to the midpoint. And without looking at it, take hold of it with your right thumb and forefinger. And then open your eyes and see how is this side different? How does this eye operate differently? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Different? Yeah, different. The eyes are different. Okay, we'll rest on your backs. And again, out of your left eye, send the, the black thread up to the ceiling and string the ping pong ball on it and slide it up and down. And play with it going, moving quickly. And moving slowly. And then leave it be. And sense your face and sense your eyes. And roll your head. And stand your feet again. And tilt your knees right and left comfortably, slowly, comfortably. What do your eyes do as you move the knees? And come to sit again. Hang your forearms on your knees, feet standing comfortably apart. Take hold of the threads now between both 
thumbs and four fingers and have those threads going to the center of both eyes and place the pearls on them and slide them up and down simultaneously. And as you become more familiar and more skilled at this visualization, can you attend to do you grit your teeth? Do you furrow your brow? Do you stop your breathing in any way? Is there any unnecessary parasitic movement that you don't need that you might consider discarding? You don't have to discard it, but you might consider it. And now can you cross those lines so that the right thread in the right hand goes to the left eye and the left thread in the left thumb and forefinger goes to the right eye. Da 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 and <laughs> slide the pearls along the crossed threads. So they'll be going What's that? My pearls are confused. Yes, yes, that's the point. Yes, so you'll be see, you'll be watching them go as a V to a point away from you. I mean, no, for, to a point away from you, and then they'll diverge as they cross and get wider. I'm glad that you're smiling. <laughs> I see people smiling. Which I behaves better? Oh, behave. Which one's clearer? Which one's more in focus? Again, are you furrowing your brow? Are you pressing your teeth together? Are you tightening your anal sphincter? things we do when we effort or try to do well. And stop the pearls in the middle the next time they are at the X where the X crosses. Where does the X cross? And with your right thumb and forefinger, take hold of them without looking. And then you can open your eyes, see is that really the middle of the middle and the middle of the middle, right and left and forward and back. And then go back, assume the position and Cross the threads again and slide the pearls up and down a couple more times, having them diverge. Towards and away. It's getting easier. And stop them in the middle. And then with your left thumb and forefinger. Grab them. At the same place. Okay. All right. Rest on your backs, because it's about to get crazier. <laughs> <laughs> Are you fitting on the floor? <clears throat> OK, 
connect a line of thread from your right eye down to your right big toe. And then connect a line from your left eye to your left big toe. You've got two very long threads. Yeah, I know. You see all the threads, don't you? And without losing a visual contact with those threads, can you bring yourself to sitting? So you have to be very aware of your big toes. Yes, and stand your feet again. And so now you've got longer lines connected to the right eye and the right big toe and the left eye and the left big toe. Are they supposed to be kind of collapsed? Or oh, well, um, well, we're going to thread a pearl on them, so you might want to have them Shorten them up so that the pearl can okay. slide and won't sag. <laughs> I know it's it's uh, you get you get quite detailed this, and go ahead and slide your pearls. Well, let's start with the right one, just the right one, to the right big toe, and back to the right eye. and slide it three quarters of the way away from you and stop it and then bring it a quarter of the way away from you and stop it and then bring it to the midpoint between your eye and your big toe and take hold of it with your right thumb and forefinger and see is that really halfway between you and your toe. and So Feldenkrais asked the question, is the issue with the eye or is it with the hand? If it was way off. <clears throat> and the answer is, it's the brain. And that's what we're working with, is the brain. So go to the left side and attach the string Again, to the left toe and attach it to your right eye. Uh, sorry, your left eye. Did I say left toe? Yeah, left big toe and left eye. And have the pearl float along that line from your eye to your toe. And attend to the rest of yourself. And stop the pearl or move the pearl three quarters of the way away from you. And then move it up closer, a quarter of the way. And then move it down to the midpoint. See it, sense it, take hold of it with your left thumb and forefinger. And then see, is it, is it, would it be running all the way to your toe? <clears throat> okay, rest on your backs. So once you can sense where the error is, then you can adjust for it. Just as if you are have a gun that has a weird kick and you know it, then you will adjust for it when you fire.
or just as when the mouse is running away from you and you have one eye that works better you can adjust for that Stand your knee, uh, your feet again, and let your knees go to the right and to the left. Let your spine twist a bit comfortably. Where do your eyes go? Okay, now we're going to do a funny thing. Pause with the feet in the middle and put your strings back on your big toes and run them to the... Um, respective eyes. And again, tilt your knees right and left. And see the strings, but in particular, don't lose track of your big toes. Where do you lose your big toe in your mind's eye? And how does that change the movement? It really changed it. Wow. Okay, keep your threads on your big toes and attached to your eyes and come to sitting. And don't lose track of your big toes. As you come to sit, do not lose track of your big toes. And come to sit comfortably, and now cross your lines. Cross your lines. And thread your pearls on them. And they're going to go in between your eyes now and your big toes. Feel where the eyes cross, and one eye goes to, tries to go to the right, and the other tries to go to the left. Okay, and now come f uh, away from the wall if you're sitting on the wall uh, with the back against the wall so that you can lean back on your hands. So that you can lean back on your hands. And keeping the threads attached to the big toes and in the eyes, are they crossed? No, they're not crossed. Okay, can you tilt the knees to the right and to the left? And have your knees far enough apart so that if you were to let both knees come down to the floor on either side, you would be able to come to a side sitting position. So both knees tilting to the right. <clears throat> At some point you would need to bring your left hand away from the floor, probably and one knee would go towards the sole of the other foot. <clears throat> so you would go back and forth and the pelvis is turning and you've got your hands back there and find out when you need to move the hand to allow you to turn over there. We're still keeping our eyes connected to the toes. Uh, no, 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 you're just turning. You're just turning, but don't lose. Thank you for asking that question. Don't lose track of your big toes. My strings are elastic. 
Elastic. There are elastic strings now. Yes. So you can turn the face to the right and to the left. And that will help the body to turn that direction as well. And the one hand can come away from the floor to help you turn. It can come around to the front. It can, you can do anything with it. Just let it trail along. And can you keep track of your big toes? and keep breathing and keep the brow relaxed and keep the teeth from pressing together grinding them away okay excellent rest on your backs And come again to sitting with your feet standing. And take hold of your threads again with your fingertips and thumbs. And attach the other ends to the... Right, right, right to right and left to left. Yes, right and right and to le left to left. And bring the hands away from the knees, the arms away from the knees, so that you've lifted the hands in front of the eyes, so you're at the horizon. And slide the pearls to touch the eyes, and slide them then to touch the fingers. <clears throat> but, but, yeah, but keep the hands stationary. So you're at the end of the thread. The thread stays pulled taut, and you slide the pearls, both pearls, in parallel lines now, rather than on this diagonal. What do you do with your neck? What do you do with your tongue? And now begin to carry the threads move them over to the right oops this won't work if you're leaning against something so let's take a rest on the back let's take a rest on the back and we will do a nice we're going to paint the left eye we're going to paint the left eye <coughs> so taking a very <coughs> uh, taking a very thin paintbrush the kind that just has a couple of two or three hairs. A very thin paintbrush, and begin to paint your your left eyebrow from the inside to the outside white. So it'll take several passes with this thin paintbrush. Paint all the hairs of your left eyebrow white. From the inside to the outside. Those of us with Groucho Marx brows could be here until today. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's just like, huh? <laughs> well, this will take a while. <laughs> And once you have covered your left eyebrow with the white paint, go from the base of the nose where it joins the skull and draw a, 
an arc under the eye along the orbital bone, along the under, underneath, uh, you know, the lower orbital bone until it meets the end of your eyebrow out to the left side. And begin to fill in that space from the center, meaning in between the brows, to the out, outer edge of the left eyebrow. Begin to fill it in in strokes. In this downward arc, arching strokes. You're filling it in, the left side, yes. So you're going to have a large white bag under your eye. Instead of dark circles, you're going to have a light circle. And once you've done that, stand your feet. Okay, that way I know everybody's done. Okay, so now <clears throat> take the paintbrush and paint the lower lashes white. Paint what? The lower lashes of your left eye. So as though you were going to put on eyeliner. And go from the tear duct to the outside. That's the direction, from the center outwards. And then can you take the paintbrush and paint the upper lashes white. And paint in between the lids, in between the closed lids, just draw a white line. And then can you go from the middle of <clears throat> the lower the uh, the upper lid where it's closed go from the midpoint up to the arch of the eyebrow up to the arch of the eyebrow and begin to fill in that space between the eyebrow and the lashes with vertical strokes up and down. Is this a union job or am I getting paid by the hour? <laughs> Job, so we'll all take a break. <laughs> take a break, yes. Yeah, not my paintbrush. You pick up that paintbrush. <laughs> I ain't moving that paintbrush. <laughs> it's not in my contract. Okay. Take your paintbrush again and begin to draw diagonal a diagonal. Like you want to fill in from the tear duct to the outer edge of the eyebrow. And from the outer edge of the eye to the inner edge of the eyebrow. And paint, paint like that. Diagonal lines.
And now you should have a very white area, yes? Take your paintbrush and paint your pupil black. and paint the iris black as well. Deep, deep black. And then let that go and just sense your face, sense your eyes, compare them. And just look around, look around a bit, and out of which eye do you see better? Which eye is clearer to you? It's interesting to look at people's faces, too, to look at the difference between their right and their left eyes. See how much more open one side of the face is, wow. Like the left side got 10 years younger. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you ready for a wild ride? Yep. Stand your feet. Hold the strings away from your eyes and hold them at the horizon so the arms are not resting on the knees. Have the feet a, a pretty generous distance apart. <clears throat> and begin to slide the pearls, close the eyes and slide the pearls till they touch the eyelids and then until they touch the thumb and forefinger. How is that left one? And if you are sitting against a wall, come away from it a bit. And now, keeping your threads coming out of your eyes, move the threads over to the right, which means the, the whole upper body is fixed. And you're still sliding the pearls. You slide the pearls to your eyes as you turn to the right. And you slide the pearls to the fingertips as you come back to the center. Now, some of you are moving, but it's the, it's the center of the eye. We want to come to the center of the eye. So moving the arms will not accomplish that. You have to keep your eyes lined up with your fingertips and your face lined up with your fingertips. So the whole upper body is going to be steered over to the right. And you go to the right, and the pearls come to touch the eyes, and you come back to the center, and the pearls go down to your fingertips. And then go to the left, and as you go to the left, the pearls come to touch your eyes, and then you come to the center, and the pearls touch your fingertips. And keep doing this, but as you turn to the right, can you allow your knees to flop over to the right? Because that's what they would need to do if you're really keeping, yep, there you go. And vice versa. So that's why we want to have the, the feet far enough apart. And we're not in interested so much in the knees. We're interested in the pearls, and your unconscious mind is going to be what's organizing what's happening from the waist down. Just keep watching the pearls and keep turning, 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 turning. Move the pearls, keep them moving, keep them sliding. And it might at first seem impossible to come to side sit, but keep, keep at it. It's a delicate movement, so you're holding threads, not steel bars. 
And they are delicate pearls. And notice the quality of the movement, regardless how far you're turning. Recall that a few moments ago you turned all the way to one side and the other. So there's no reason you couldn't do it again. <laughs> the only thing we've changed is that we've put pearls and they're coming out of our eyes. <laughs> Uh huh. Fallen over is allowed. It's part of the fun. It's quite a ne- negotiation, isn't it? Keep track of your pearls. Keep them moving. Keep them moving. So you might not go all the way. You might not go all the way. So now let's rest on the back. Feel the quality of your resting. Okay, <clears throat> come sit, and we'll do the same thing, except we're going to add another element. Another element, so. Stand your feet and lift your threads away from your eyes and string your pearls on them and start to carry the threads, move them over to the right and move them over to the left, but do not lose track of your big toes. As you slide the pearls towards your eyes and away, and you turn to the right and to the left, can you keep in your awareness of yourself your right and left big toe and notice when you lose it? Is the string connected to our hands? Or to, the to the fingertips. To the fingertips. You could connect the thread to the, the toes and have it be very elastic, but then, then I see people stopping turning. <laughs> Lose track of your big toes, but keep sliding the pearls towards and away from you. And now just for fun, you don't have to you don't have to go this far, but keep turning and moving the pearls. And once you've come over to one side or the other, could you come up onto your knees? Mm -hmm. by any means necessary and then go back down and as you go down as you go down the pearls come to your eyes and as you go to the other side and come up onto your knees on the other side the pearls go to your fingertips so as you come to sit on the middle on your butt the pearls are touching your eyes and as you come up onto your knees, they are at the horizon. But no, 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 you don't put the hands down. So if it's not going to work. And, and you can get there by whatever means necessary. By any means necessary, right. Your unconscious will organize it. By any means necessary. And just keep moving the pearls and thinking that you're going to come onto your knees somehow. This cannot be planned. <laughs> might surprise you how you get there just get there in the most comfortable way mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> not without my hands <laughs> yeah. 
So then they just go to there. Just go to that place. Just go to that place. And make it smaller and keep moving the pearls. Now if you're coming up and down onto your knees, <clears throat> where are your big toes? So don't try to come, don't try to come. If it's not working, you're trying. Don't try. You'll either come up or you won't, but you probably lost your pearls completely the moment you started trying. Keep the pearls moving. Just turn to the right and turn to the left. You don't have to come. Why would you want to come up onto your knees anyway? What, is, what a stupid idea. <laughs> Right, Mr. Fluffy? <laughs> yeah. Just keep the movement soft and, f yeah, soft and, and focus. Yeah, see, exactly, exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Very nice. There we go. There we go. Okay, rest on your backs. And feel how you're fitting against the floor. quality of the rest. The sensation in your face. Now, at the end of the lesson, if you are habituated to wearing glasses, you might maybe just delay putting them on a bit and and look at something in, printed and see if you see it better or just look at it at anything see if it's sharper Okay, with that same quality that you had a moment ago as you were going to the right and to the left, just bring yourself up to standing. and come up to standing. Excellent. Mm. Dizzy. Dizzy? Yeah. This will definitely affect the vestibular system. So, yeah. Move about. And mm. Bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. You feel clearer? Yeah. That's interesting. And it's like, I like to be positive and say it's not there, but I do, when we first started, mm -hmm. I do feel like there's like this a haze. shield or mm -hmm. a haze mm -hmm. or something. And I don't feel it right now. Your left eye is very open mm -hmm. right now, very open. Yeah, look mm -hmm. at each other's faces. It's very interesting. <laughs> The folds of the skin, yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. So you don't need clothespins just yet, right? <laughs> yeah, a lot of people do that. They have it yeah. just tucked, so because you can't read, you know, it kind of gets in the way. Yeah. yeah. Trippy. 
Trippy. <laughs> It was interesting to notice at the beginning, you know, just going into the that extreme of a visualization for me, which I don't consider myself that something I do that well. Mm -hmm. Just you know, the inner child this is different. <laughs> Immediately, the but inner the inner brat throws a tantrum. Yeah. yeah. I was able to just say, okay. <laughs> and did you get <laughs> did you get better at, at visualizing? Yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah, it's a learned skill. And very, very useful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Vision? Uh, Vision.